NASA will not sit idly by and watch as some U.S. private space company discovers new territory in space before them. Anyone would be as frustrated as them when you consider how much they have to do with how little they are being funded with. So, while Elon Musk's SpaceX is making preparations to eventually colonize Mars, NASA just revealed a ship specifically bound for Mars that is somehow better than Starship. Let's see just how realistic this new Mars-bound ship is, and whether it can stack up to SpaceX's Starship in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Sending astronauts to Mars by 2040 is an audacious goal, but NASA is trying anyway. At the heart of NASA's interplanetary ambitions lies the Orion spacecraft, a versatile vehicle designed to undertake both lunar and potential Mars missions. Everything will start with the Artemis program, which has the goal of establishing the first long-term human outpost on the moon. From there, the agency says they will use what we learn on and around the moon to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. The Artemis II mission, set to launch toward the end of 2024, will be the first crewed flight of the Orion spacecraft, the very same vessel that's been tasked to send humans to Mars. Mars. Both the Orion and the Space Launch System associated with it are critical to NASA's exploration plans at the Moon and beyond, the HSC declared. The Orion capsule is specifically designed to keep humans alive during months-long missions and will be equipped with advanced environmental control and life support systems designed for the demands of a deep space mission, as per NASA's statement. The first step in proving that these systems are viable will be a a successful Artemis II mission, which will go beyond the moon and potentially further than any human has traveled in history. The upcoming mission is only a flyby, and while humans will not land on the moon until Artemis III, operating on the lunar surface requires systems that can reliably operate far from home, support the needs of human life, and still be light enough to launch, NASA wrote. As a result, exploration of the moon and Mars is intertwined with the moon providing a platform to test tools, instruments, and equipment that could be used on Mars. As the command module of the Mars spacecraft, Orion provides the life support systems and necessary amenities for astronauts during their journey, addressing their immediate needs and ensuring their well-being during the extended mission. However, the Orion spacecraft alone may not provide sufficient life support for astronaut survival. NASA is designing habitat modules for both lunar exploration and Martian transportation missions, and those for the latter will support life for more than a thousand days. The former, called the Surface Habitat, or SH, is central to the Space Agency's Artemis program since it will be the primary residence for the astronauts during their missions. The Habitat will be able to support 30-day missions for two crew members, and it is also designed to accommodate four members for short time periods during a transitory period. The surface habitat's operations will be based on NASA's landing site for the Artemis missions since they will land on the lunar south pole. Four astronauts are expected to operate on the moon at a time, with two living in the surface habitat and two living in the logistics lander. Transportation between the lander and the habitat will occur through a rover, and NASA anticipates that the SH will evolve to support four crew members for up to 60 days. It is also designed to function as a life support system for the lunar lander. This will see the lander dock to the SH and transfer urine and condensate, or sweat, to it. These will be processed where water and gases capable of supporting the astronauts will flow back to the lander. The habitat will have to endure long eclipses, lasting more than 100 days. At the same time, engineers will also work on ensuring that the habitat can sustain long dormancy periods periods that will require the SH to be in storage mode. This is a crucial design challenge, as NASA cannot leverage the experience it has gained from the space station to design the SH, since the station requires constant human presence for operation. The habitat will work together with NASA's Artemis Base Camp. The space agency is quite optimistic about the Artemis program's ability to expand astronauts' time living and working on the moon. 
The Artemis mission will utilize the lunar south pole, where daylight is present for as many as 200 days, while the Apollo astronauts had to contend with 14 days of daylight on the equator and fly back to Earth before this period elapsed. These elements will also help NASA in preparing itself for Mars exploration missions. The SH will allow it to simulate Mars missions on the moon and work with a new module called a Mars Transit Habitat. During the simulation phases, the crew will connect with the MTH directly or through NASA's lunar space station, the Gateway. Then, they will descend to the moon and work there as if they were working on Mars. Once the surface missions are complete, the astronauts will return to the Mars habitat and simulate a return journey to Earth. Finally, the game changer in NASA's Mars rocket will be nuclear thermal propulsion technology. Honestly, SpaceX's Starship was initially assumed to be the future means of Earth to Mars transportation. However, refueling and reusability were cited as medium risks. It's clear that while the success rate for each mission is good, the risk to the overall mission increases the more refueling you have to do. If one or more launches are postponed, this also makes the travel time uncertain. This could be a problem for the overall planning of a mission with people on or around the Moon and Mars. Additionally, a conventional spacecraft powered by burning liquid fuel typically takes around 7 or 8 months to reach the red planet. Here's where nuclear propulsion comes into play. Scientists have said nuclear rocket engines could shave off at least a third of that time. Earlier this year, NASA teamed up with DARPA to make the idea a reality, signing a deal with defense contractor Lockheed Martin to launch a working prototype type into space as early as 2025. The demonstration will be a crucial step in meeting our moon to Mars objectives for crew transportation into deep space. This isn't the first time NASA has explored the idea of a nuclear thermal rocket engine, as the technology already exists. The agency's project NERVA, or Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application, ran from the late 50s until the early 70s, and saw several prototypes tested on the ground, but the end of the Apollo missions and subsequent cuts in NASA's budget meant the engine was never tested in space. The idea has now been revived under the name DRACO, short for Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cis Lunar Operations. The new name helps explain why DARPA has come on board. The agency thinks the same technology could allow military satellites to maneuver more rapidly and efficiently in orbit to avoid being targeted by enemies. Draco will use a less enriched fuel known as High Assay Low Enriched Uranium, or HALU. This reactor won't be switched on until the vehicle is in orbit to avoid the risk of a nuclear accident at launch. It'll be lifted to an altitude between 435 and 1,240 miles, which is high enough that the rocket will stay in orbit for at least 300 years, giving time for radioactive materials to decay to safe levels before it returns to Earth. Once there, the reactor will be fired up and used to heat cryogenically cooled liquid hydrogen. As the propellant rapidly rises from the minus 420 degrees Fahrenheit to as high as 4,400 degrees, it expands dramatically, and the resulting gas is pushed through a nozzle to propel the spacecraft. The vehicle isn't expected to carry out any complicated maneuvers. The idea is to simply validate that the design works and collect data on its operation. Store Storing liquid hydrogen at cryogenic temperatures for extended periods in space is likely to prove as much of a challenge as getting the reactor to work safely. If the tests are successful, though, a nuclear-powered rocket engine could have a host of benefits. The design requires less propellant to be carried, freeing up space for more equipment and other important payloads. The reactor could also double as a reliable power source for the astronauts once they reach the Red Planet. While it might be some time before the idea is ready for prime time, it's seems like nuclear-powered rockets may be key to NASA's goal of venturing deeper into the solar system. While all these concepts of NASA's Mars spacecraft hold immense promise, challenges remain on the horizon. 
the financial implications, technological intricacies, and extended timelines pose significant hurdles alone. After all, remember what NASA said about the SLS's launch cost and the frequency of launches it'll have. In any case, all of us here at Great SpaceX are wishing all the best for NASA and U.S. tax dollars on the way to Mars. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.